My name is Vera Only Wen, and today I will be sharing about my RCAP experience. Let's start with a quick introduction to myself. I am Vera Only Wen from Raffles Girls School Secondary Robotics Club, and I have participated in the RCAP Co Space Rescue First Steps U19 Sub League. I am experienced in robotics and have participated in competitions like Innovators Program, National Robotics Competition Singapore, as well as RCAP and IQ Challenges. I am proficient in code languages such as Python, C, and C++. To start, here's a summary on the preliminary challenge, where I will cover my views on the challenge in hindsight, as well as my overall experience. The rescue task was to pick up as many red, black, and cyan objects in the most efficient way possible, and deposit them in the orange zones, making sure to avoid traps to accumulate as many points per second possible. In a nutshell, it is to ensure we score as many points as we can in the 5 minute time limit. I broke down the task into three main challenges, collecting as many objects in the most efficient path possible, getting the highest score possible in the given time frame of 5 minutes, and ensuring that each score does not happen by chance. Firstly, to collect as many objects most efficiently, I increased the speed of the robot to the maximum, then ensured that unnecessary pickups are avoided when fully loaded, and unnecessary deposits are avoided by depositing only when fully loaded. This maximizes collecting time. Secondly, to get the highest score possible in 5 minutes, I ensured that the speed was not too fast or too slow, then used square targeting to plan a route for the robot to travel to, ensuring that it collects RRBBCC sets each time, and depositing only when fully loaded, which will increase efficiency of movement and thus maximizing of points. I will cover this later on in further detail. Lastly, to ensure each score is not fluked, I reran the code multiple times to get a grasp of the average score. Then we set the map periodically to ensure the code is not overly fine-tuned to the map. This increases reliability of the code. The current results from the preliminaries have ranged to be about 2,000, and I hope to be able to hit my goal of 2.5 thousand in the finals. To improve on my preliminaries code, I would like to tune my rotations and values to be more precise. Replanning is also an area I would have to work on to achieve higher scores, as well as understanding of my implemented strategies. Next, I shall touch on the strategies I have implemented in my code and provide an analysis on how it has benefited my code and helped in achieving a higher score. For a higher score, these are the many tasks I have achieved in the process of this competition. First, square targeting. On the right is a sketch of the preliminary map, separated into their coordinates. For a better idea of how to collect objects efficiently, the spawns of the objects would allow for a more straightforward route that the robot can take by targeting the squares that contain the objects that the robot currently requires to make a full RRBBCC set. This brings me to route planning. My code starts from the starting point that targets black, cyan, then red objects. Then and then deposit. The video shows a snippet of how the route planning works in the code. Route planning helps the robot to run a smoother course and collect objects more efficiently. I use the loaded objects variable to adjust the speed of the robot. In this case, when it is loaded, it will travel slower than if it is empty. I also use it to ascertain when the robot is fully loaded, and hence when it should deposit, and whether the amount of objects have hit the quota of two red two black and two cyan objects picked up. For rotationals, I have utilized two types in my code. Differential steering uses proportional steering, taking the ultrasonic values from each sensor and determining the distance the robot is from the wall. The closer the robot is to an object, the higher the error, thus the higher the rotation and hence the shorter the distance the robot is to the wall and the sharper the turn. As for centering rotationals, it is implemented to ensure that the robot turns when there is sufficient space between it and the wall. The error return gives the direction in which the robot is tilted in, allowing for the adjustment of the direction it is facing in for more precise positions. For my current code, it is free of bugs and runs with a high success rate. However, my square targeting, trap avoidance and deposit code is rather unreliable and tends to be flukish with tuning and clashes between the two rotationals being possible causes to these issues 
I adjusted the values and rotations and created the backup codes for when the deposit fails. Now I will provide my insights and thoughts about this entire journey as I reflect on my RCAR experience. I have four takeaways from this experience. Firstly, I have become much more familiar with C syntax and have gathered much coding experience from RCAP. Next, I realized how important strategy is in competitions like these, where relying on chance and luck is not as reliable as relying on a strategy, which creates a smoother process as well. Third, I have built on my resilience and commitment levels through this competition, as well as learning how crucial compromise is in such an experience. It was really challenging for me to schedule all my commitments to ensure that I was not overly burnt out by everything that was going on. However, I feel that I have come out of this competition a much better version of myself. Lastly, I learned to better appreciate the people around me, and I realized how much my friends and teachers guided me along the way, and I would like to thank each and every one of them for helping me along the way. Dear future RCAP participants, here are a few pointers to help you during your participation in RCAP. Don't be afraid to make sacrifices. Without sacrifices and hard work, there is no chance of success. Even if coding gets tiring and rigorous sometimes, don't ever give up. Second, have an open mind. It helps along the way to have feedback from people around you. Managing your time is important too. Everything should be done early to allow for sufficient buffer time, so avoid procrastinating. Having clearer understanding of the task helps with the better completion of the task, so ensure that you fully comprehend what you're putting into your code. To conclude, here is an analysis on my preliminary results, with scores ranging from 1,150 to 2,080 points, with an average of 1,450 points. The biggest issues that cause the code to fail are depositing, square targeting, and trap avoidance failures which will hopefully be rectified. Thank you so much for your attention and I hope you have taken something away from my presentation.